okay my focus okay hey everybody april here and i'm back with another video i decided to do it old school today and sit on the floor and talk to y'all real quick so in this video i just wanted to do a quick q a of the questions that i saw that i got repeatedly in the last couple of videos so first things first i just wanted to talk about oh, retin-a i love love me some retin-a and basically what retin-a is is tretinoin and tretinoin is a high percentage of vitamin A and what vitamin A does is it increases the cell turnover rate producing new skin basically and when you're using retin-a you peel a lot I'll try to find some pictures of um, the beginning of my journey of using retin-a so I did peel for a couple of months and to be honest with you I still peel to this day while using this product but it's just not as bad as what it used to be when I first started so when you're peeling that just means that the retin-a is working it's doing what it's supposed to do and that's shedding the dead skin off of your face and that's why retin-a is also good for dark marks because it helps to eventually fade the dark marks from your skin retin-a is also one of those acne creams that causes your skin to get worse before it gets better when i first started using retin-a my skin purged like crazy i broke out so much in the whiteheads and the pimples it was it was just all over and basically what that is is just getting the impurities from out of your system and out of your skin so it's just something that you really have to stick with and you have to be patient so with that being said while you're using retin-a you will experience purging dryness peeling you will experience it all and you will actually start to think that this is the worst product on earth that they have ever invented but trust me you just have to stick it out you have to go through these phases you have to go through the purging phase you have to go through the dryness and the peeling and then your skin will start to look and feel better so just stick it out and stay consistent when you're using um retin-a and also i recommend highly highly recommend the use of sunscreen while you're using retin-a because retin-a causes your skin to be extra sensitive to the sun so make sure that you're using a, a nice protective sunscreen while you're using this product also speaking of sunscreen you want to use sunscreen anyway and a lot of people think just because you know we chocolate and we got all the melanin in the world means that we don't need sunscreen but that is so false. We need sunscreen just as much as the next person needs sunscreen, okay? So it's very important that you wear it, especially if you suffer from dark spots. Because the sun only darkens your dark spots. And speaking of dark spots, Hydroquinone. This is what I used uh, for a couple months to clear my dark spots. And when you're using um, Retin-A, a product like Retin-A, and also a product like Hydroquinone, sunscreen is a must. If you're using um, Natanola, if you're using Ambi fade cream, any type of fade cream, anything with hydroquinone in it, you need sunscreen. Years ago, before I started my journey, when I was back in college, I would try to use, even in high school, I tried to use the Ambi fade cream numerous times and it never worked for me. And the reason why that did not work for me was because I was not using sunscreen. If you go out and put hydroquinone on your face, and you don't use sunscreen this is not going to work if you go out use hydroquinone and use sunscreen to protect your skin then it will work if you're just using this by itself and not protecting your skin you're not going to see results so throughout the many years of me trying different fading creams it never worked for me but this go around when i incorporated sunscreen into my regimen that's when i actually started to see the disappearance of my scars or the fading of my scars also when it comes to hydroquinone it's pretty controversial some people don't recommend it it's actually banned in europe i hear but not in the united states <laughs> i don't know if that's a good or a bad thing so if you live in the u.s you can still get a uh, hydroquinone from your dermatologist or your doctor or whatever but it's pretty controversial because a lot of people feel like it's linked to cancer and whatnot but it's just something that you have to research for yourself and decide for yourself if you want to use it but to my understanding it's not a known fact to be linked to cancer like I said you just have to do the research for yourself how I feel about it even if it was linked to cancer everything is linked to cancer nowadays the 
water bottles that we drink out of. The plastic is linked to cancer. When we go outside, the sun can give you cancer. I mean, I mean, it sounds crazy, but like I said, just do your research and you can decide for yourself on whether or not you want to go ahead and use hydroquinone. But one thing that I do recommend, I recommend not using this cream for a long period of time. I suggest if you're going to use it consistently, I suggest using it for no more than three months. After your three month mark, take a three month break. And then if you choose to, you can pick it back up after that. But don't use it consistently for more than three months, any fading cream or any hydroquinone product. I personally no longer use hydroquinone. I haven't used it since last year, probably going on a year, going on a year since I've used this product. I used it a couple days ago just to demonstrate it in my skincare video. But I just don't feel the need to continue to use it on my skin. My dark marks are pretty much gone. And the ones that I do get now, I just let them fade naturally. So yeah, hydroquinone is just totally up to you. Just do your research. So as far as where to get Retin-A, I got my Retin-A from my dermatologist. I got it prescribed to me, but I do know that that there are some people that get it from different websites that's totally up to you but what I would do what I would suggest I would suggest just going to your dermatologist and having them prescribe it to you just because you really never really know what's being sent to you from overseas and things like that and you're putting it on your face so I just go the safe route <laughs> and get it from your dermatologist if you can. If you can't, then by all means, do what you gotta do. As far as hydroquinone, like I said previously in my other video, you don't have to get hydroquinone from a dermatologist. The highest percentage is uh, 4%. You do have to get the 4% from your dermatologist. But there's also a 3% uh, hydroquinone, and that's Natanola. And you can get this from CVS. Uh, Walmart, I always see it in Walmart. It's always in the ethnic section or where they have, you know, our hair care products and stuff like that. It's always in that aisle. So check that out. And also, Ambi Fade Cream is a form of hydroquinone. But if you don't want to use chemicals or prescribed creams or whatever, you want to go the natural route, I highly, highly, highly suggest sea salt. I did do a video on it on how I use it, and I'll link that in the description box. The majority of the time, I use it as a toner. Sometimes I use it as a mask. It just depends on my laziness. <laughs> okay, so what caused my acne? what didn't cause my acne. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of things that kind of contributed to my breakouts. One of them being milk. So when I first started my skincare journey, I researched things that cause acne and every time dairy would pop up. I used to be an avid cereal eater. Like I would have multiple bowls of cereal a day. So I challenged myself to stop drinking milk. So I went without milk for months and then last year around october sometime i was really craving a bowl of cereal so i went out got some cereal got some milk had a bowl of cereal and within the next couple of days i had a cluster of pimples on my cheeks and once that happened i was like yep it's the milk i can't drink milk because it causes acne for me now as far as other dairy products i still eat it i still eat cheese I can't give up cheese. <laughs> I still eat ice cream, milkshakes, yogurt. It's one of the ingredients that I always use in my green smoothies and a ton of other things. So other dairy products I still eat is just milk. I, I don't know why, but I, I just can't eat milk because it breaks me out. So I suggest that you guys do that research for yourselves and decide whether or not you should stop eating dairy. So it also caused my acne was my natural hair yes i hate to say it but my hair caused me to break out not necessarily my hair i shouldn't say that but i should say the products that i used in my hair as well as my bad habits when it came to my hair caused me to break out now when i first went natural i can say that's when my acne really started to get really bad and that's because of the products that i was using generally you know when you do your twist outs and braid outs and things like that 
the product is getting all over your face and it's just seeping into your pores and when i shower and co-wash i'm messy in the shower when it comes to co-washing i'd be having conditioner all over the walls all over the shower curtains all in my eyes all in my face and those products basically just sit on my face and when i'm done with my hair i'll probably just wipe the product off with my hand or something i wouldn't go and actually wash my face with soap i would just wipe it off and that's not good enough because it's still on my skin so i had to change that bad habit of mine so every time i'm done doing my hair whether it's doing a style or washing my hair i always make sure that i go in afterwards and cleanse thoroughly cleanse my skin just to get all of that product and stuff off of my face so it's not seeping into my pores and causing me to break out another thing that also caused me to break out i had a bad habit of not cleaning my makeup brushes <laughs> which sounds disgusting. So now I just make sure that I keep my makeup brushes clean. If you don't clean your makeup brushes often, you're just taking a dirty makeup brush and putting bacteria and dirt back onto your face. You're just transferring germs back and forth. So it's very important that you keep your uh, makeup brushes clean. Okay, so for a few tips on how to clear your skin, one tip would be to clean your makeup brushes like I said because if you're not then you're just transferring germs back and forth. Another one would be to change your pillowcases multiple times a week. I actually went out um, about a year ago and bought like 10 pillowcases at one time and I changed my pillowcases about every two to three days. So I change my pillowcases often so that I'm not laying my face on dirty fabric as far as you know the oils from our body the dead skin and the oils from my hair and things like that that can really irritate your face so that's why i make sure that i change my pillowcases about every two to three days and i know you guys hear this all the time but drinking water is very important it helps to cleanse your body and get rid of all of the impurities so try to increase your water intake Another tip of mine would be to use a new washcloth every single day when you're uh, cleansing your face. And the reason why I say that is because generally most people just use the same face cloth for a whole week. I really don't think that's a good idea because you're just transferring the bacteria back and forth from an old dirty cloth to your freshly cleansed skin. So I suggest just using a new cloth every day. If you don't want to use the washcloths, then you just use paper towels. And that'll just prevent bacteria from transferring back and forth to your skin. Another tip of mine would be to purchase a pimple extractor. This is what it looks like. And I suggest this because it's better than using our fingers to pop pimples because when we use our fingers we put a lot of pressure on our skin and it just causes our dark marks to look worse than what it will look like if you use a pimple extractor and also when using your fingers you're just spreading literally just spreading the bacteria all over your face and that just causes for more pimples so yeah i highly suggest that you guys pick one of these up you can get this from target i've seen them in cvs pretty much anywhere and the last tip like i said would be to use your sunscreen sunscreen is very 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 important if I had to list the top things that cleared my skin I would say the retin-a the hydroquinone to help with the dark spots my sea salt and sunscreen you cannot use these and not use this so that's pretty much it for this video i hope you all found this whole series helpful one thing that i would like to say if you are suffering from acne and dark spots don't give up just keep pushing you will find something that works for you trust me if i could find something that worked for my skin and the way that it was to have clear skin now girl you could find something too so just stay determined and most of all you have to be patient you have to be patient there is nothing nothing there is no acne cream no pill no nothing that is going to change your skin overnight it took me a year literally a year to gain clear skin don't think it's going to happen overnight because it's not patience consistency and determination will get you the skin that you want Okay, just don't give up.
just don't give up because you will get there. All right, so if you enjoyed this series, please be sure to give all of the videos a thumbs up. Please share the videos with anyone that may be struggling with acne and dark marks. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. The next video will be a hair video, okay? So stay tuned and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye, thanks for watching.